this is Mr. Masonette, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to practice expressing the square root of a number in its simplest radical form. And to accomplish this, what we're going to do is we're going to do a prime factorization of that number. So let's start by taking the number underneath our radical sign. We want to express 424 in simplest radical form. So we go off to the side here and we write 424. And we start by making a factor tree of that number. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this number and we're going to break it down into all prime numbers. And remember, a prime number is a number with exactly two factors, which are only one and itself. All right, so let's start by multiplying 2 by 212. Now, as soon as you get a factor that is a prime factor or a prime number, I like to go ahead and circle that number just to know that we're finished with that number. We cannot break that down any further because it is a prime. 212 we can produce by multiplying 2 times 106. And we go ahead and circle this 2 because it is prime. And we can break 106 down into 2 times 53. And 2 is prime, and 53 is also prime. We cannot break that down any further. All right, once you have taken your number and have broken it down into all prime elements, what you should do is you go to the side and you make two radical symbols. Now the first radical symbol is going to be for all of your factors that make a perfect square. And the second radical symbol is going to be for all of the factors that do not produce a perfect square. Now here's what I mean by this. You go to all of your prime numbers that you have on the side here and you find pairs of prime numbers. For example, we have a 2 here and a 2 here. So we would say this is a pair of primes. And the reason that we pair them up is because if we multiply them together, they would produce a perfect square. For example, 2 times 2 is 4, and we know that 4 is a perfect square because the square root of 4 is 2. So after you have identified a pair of numbers, just multiply them together and write that result underneath the radical that is your perfect square radical. Now we have a 2 left over here and a 53 left over here. Each one of these numbers do not have a number to pair up with. So we just write whatever we have remaining underneath our other radical symbol. All right, now what we do is we take what we have underneath this first radical and just write the answer. We know the square root of 4 is 2. And then we take everything we have underneath this radical and just multiply them out. 2 times 53 is 106, and we have to leave that trapped underneath our radical symbol. So we would say that 2 times the square root of 106 is equal to the square root of 424. So the square root of 424 in simplest radical form is 2 times the square root of 106. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, with this example, we have 936. So let's go ahead and break that down into all prime numbers. So I'm going to start by multiplying 9 times 104 to make 936. Um, right away, I recognize that 9 can fit into itself once, and 9 can fit into 36 exactly four times. So that's why I knew that 9 times 104 produces 936. Now, 9 can be broken down into 3 times 3. And I have to circle each one of these threes because three is a prime number. And now we can break down this 104. And 104 is even, so I'm just going to multiply 2 times 52. And I circle this 2 because it's prime. And we can break 52 down into 2 times 26. And 2 is a prime number, so I go ahead and circle that. And 26 can be broken down into the factors 2 and 13, and I circle each one of those factors because 2 is prime and 13 is a prime number. All right, after you have broken your number down into all prime numbers, you go off to the side here and you make two radical symbols, one for the perfect squares and one for the factors that you have left over. All right, so now we have to identify pairs of numbers because remember, when you multiply a number by itself, it produces a perfect square. So right here we have a pair of 2's, and we know that 2 times 2 is 4, so I'm going to write 4 underneath my perfect square radical. And we have a pair of 3's, and 3 times 3 is 9, so we write a 9 underneath that radical symbol. 
and we have a 2 left over and a 13 left over. So I like to take my leftovers and write them underneath the other radical symbol. All right, so we're going to go ahead and multiply these perfect squares together. 4 times 9 is 36. So we're going to have to find the square root of 36, which is a perfect square, and that would be 6. And we leave everything under here alone because they are not a perfect square. And we multiply these two numbers together. 2 times 13 is 26. But we have to leave that result trapped underneath the radical symbol because 26 does not have a factor that is a perfect square. So we would say the square root of 936 in simplest radical form is 6 times the square root of 26. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. Okay, so we have to take 1,250 and break it down into all prime factors. So to start off here, because this number ends in a 0, I know that 10 can fit into 1250 equally. So we're going to do 10 times 125. And then we can break 10 down into 2 times 5. And 2 is prime, so we circle it, as is 5. And 125 is composite, so we can break that down further by multiplying 5 by 25. And 5 is prime, so we circle it. And 25, we can break down into 5 times 5. And we circle both of those, of course. All right, so we go off to the side here, and we make our two radical symbols here. And underneath the first one, I like to write the perfect squares. So we have to find pairs of prime numbers. All right, right here we have a pair of fives. So we're going to go ahead and take 5 times 5, which is 25, and write that underneath our first radical symbol. And we have another pair of fives right here. So 5 times 5 produces the perfect square of 25. So we write it underneath our first radical symbol. And we have a 2 left over. There's no other 2 to pair up with it, so that's not going to produce any kind of perfect square. So we write that underneath this radical symbol. All right, now notice underneath the first radical symbol, we are multiplying the same number by itself, which means that the square root of whatever that produces is going to be 25. So 25 times 25 is 625, but because we're multiplying the same number by itself, we can just take that one number and just write it one time. And then we just bring down the square root of 2. So the square root of 1,250 in simplest radical form is 25 times the square root of 2. All right, so that was just three quick examples showing how you can use prime factorization to break a number down into simplest radical form. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I hope to see you back on my channel soon.